Hello friends, it is Monday, the third week of Lent, and the title for our devotion today is House Cleaning. We're going to take our Bibles and we're going to open them up to Matthew 21 so that we can read verses 12 through 15 together. I'm going to read it for us in just a moment. If you want to press pause and grab your Bible so you can follow along with me, that's awesome. And just as a reminder, I'm reading out of the ESV. So if you're wanting it to sound the same, um, pick up your ESV uh, translation, okay? Matthew 21, 12 through 15 says this. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all those who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. Ooh, listen to this. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer and you make it a den of robbers. But then there's this shift. It goes on to say this. And the blind and the lame, they came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things he did and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. I think they were mad about the whole situation. I think they were mad that he kicked out the money changers. I think he was mad that people um, came to him. I think he was mad. I think they were mad that he was healing people. Why would you be mad when someone gets healed? Why would you be mad? Unless there is something going on in your heart. Why would you be mad about that? Mm. I think they were mad about the whole situation. Let's get into our devotion here. This is a decisive moment. Jesus' enemies have long been looking for a way to get rid of him. But when he cleans out the temple that they have turned into a marketplace, he attacks them on what they think is their own ground. Can you imagine that? Oh my gosh, that paragraph is wild. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, good, because it's going to talk about this too. It says, it isn't, of course, their ground. It's God's house. And God has every right to say what's done in it. And clearly, God prefers the blind, the lame, and the small children over cheating merchants. Wouldn't you? So Jesus cleans house, and his enemies will kill him in that same week. Wow. But they don't realize that Jesus' suffering and death will cleanse more than just the temple. By laying down his life, Jesus will cleanse the hearts of God's people my heart and yours. He will throw out the devil that has lived there far too long and replace it with healing, teaching, and praise. We cannot do it. Jesus can do it. He can make us the clean temple of God. Let's pray. Lord, make us clean and live in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, friends, here are the three things for us to think about and discuss after this video ends. Now, friends, if you don't want to discuss these three things and you just want to go back and really dive into this text and, and re-listen to this devotion and kind of just talk amongst yourselves about that, well, oh my gosh, do that for sure. Um, because there's a lot just to be talked about in that. But if you do want these three things to think about and discuss with those around you, let me give them to you now. The first is this. Would you be able to worship with an animal market going on beside you? Would you? <laughs> the second question is, what are some modern ways that people abuse the worship of God? Hmm. I bet we have lots of opinions on this, don't we? Lots of thoughts on this. Oh, I'd love to be in this conversation. Hmm. Okay. And then the third one is this. What is the place of small children in worship and why? Hmm. I have very strong opinions on this. <laughs> I love you so much, my friends. I'm looking forward to discussing this with some of you who've been reaching out to me. And I will meet you. Where will I meet you? Oh yeah, back here tomorrow. Bye.